Excuse me, dog. Hi, guys. Well, it is a dark, gloomy, just yuck, kind of brooding late August day. Uh, we are heading into the last weekend of the summer of 2024 in the collapse of everything uh, for all intents and purposes. Labor Day weekend 2024 kicking off here on Friday, August 30th, although it already feels and is starting to look like September 30th as we head into the fall of 2024, which could be the earliest fall at least of my lifetime. And uh, since it is Friday, <clears throat> we all know what that means. <coughs> it is time to put on our mud boots and grab our shit shovels because it is time for our weekly Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup rant. And I have been taking a few days off of the Doomosphere. Uh, had some company visiting, so as you may have noticed, I haven't been around much, so I uh, haven't been really doing my ain't gonna happen doomer duties, but I'm sure we can scrape up a little bit here in the last uh, in the last minutes of the week uh, before the great unraveling of the summer of 2024 begins on Labor Day weekend uh, here in this week's Ain't Gonna Happen rant and already, already my brand new computer is uh, screwing around because I wanted to but apparently, oh here we go I have an email, I don't know if you can see it, from Al Gore. Al Gore, you know, he, uh, Al Gore likes to check in with me occasionally to try to, uh, to try to panhandle some money off of me to save the planet. If, I don't know if you're aware or not that Al's latest reincarnation, I guess he's at least the public figurehead for this group with, that goes by the hilarious name of the Climate Reality Project. The Climate Reality Project. There you go, which of course is just one of the, this is one of these uh, j just engines to pump out the bright green lies. So Al Gore is looking back over the summer, we're going to hear a lot of these looking ahead. <clears throat> this summer, we have suffered through record-shattering heat waves and witnessed the devastation of extreme weather events around the world. The truly global nature of this crisis is on display as impacts reach nearly every community on the planet. Fortunately, Fortunately, there is still time to act. Yes, but we must act swiftly and work together to avert the worst impacts of the climate crisis and achieve a just transition to clean energy. Yes. That is why I personally reached out a few days ago with a rare opportunity to help Climate Reality grow its grassroots movement to meet this critical moment. But our deadline is tomorrow at midnight and we're still falling short of our goal. Yes. Can I count on you to make a gift now? to power our work, to build a truly, I love how he says this, net zero future. Well, 
I do think we are working together to build a net zero future. So maybe I should chip in a nickel to work together to help Al Gore and his friends build a net zero future. At this critical moment for our planet, I have a... <laughs> At this critical moment for our planet, I have a... <laughs> I have I have I have I have, I have, I have, I have because why does Al Gore have why does Al Gore have well because of the grassroots movement we are continuing to build together with the knowledge and support of our that our trainings provide Thousands of people, just like you, can find their place in the climate movement and gain their tools and networks they need to achieve real solutions. Yes. Thank you for all you do for our planet. Yes. Al Gore personally wants to thank me for all I do for our planet. Signed, Al Gore, founder and chairman of the Climate Reality Project. Uh huh. Thank you, Al. But, uh, you know, we're going to go from Al Gore to the. Uh, to the shut up to the uh, chief cook and bottle washer doomer at the United Nations. We cannot have an ain't gonna happen roundup roundup without hearing for the you know one of the number one uh, apocalyptimists on the planet that would be none other than Antonio Guterres. So what is on Antonio's mind this week while uh, Al Gore is trying to rustle up some money? What's uh, Tony talking about? The ocean is overflowing. Yes. UN chief issues global SOS as new reports warn Pacific sea level rise outstrips global average. Okay. A quote, worldwide catastrophe, close quote, is imperiling Pacific Islands and the world must respond to the unprecedented and devastating impacts of rising seas. Quote, before it is too late. Yes, the United Nations chief has warned. Yes, Antonio Guterres has issued a global SOS. Save our seas from the Pacific Island nation of Tonga on Tuesday with a plea to the world to quote, massively increase finance and support for vulnerable countries, close quote, in grave danger of the human-caused climate crisis. Quoting Tony, the ocean is overflowing. This is a crazy situation. Rising seas are a crisis entirely of humanity's making, a crisis that will soon swell to an almost unimaginable scale with no lifeboat to take us back to safety. Close quote. Guterres's dire warning. We have another dire warning. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So, what is he saying here? Uh, what can you do to... What can you do 
to save Tonga and Tuvala from going under the ocean. Yes. So he was uh, presenting this new report saying, quote, emerging research on climate tipping points and ice sheet dynamics is raising alarm among scientists that future sea level rise could be much larger and occur sooner than previously thought. Yes. All right. I am, uh, okay. Finally. I guess there's two new reports. Both reports call on global leaders to improve early warning systems for vulnerable communities, majorly increase funding for resilience and adaptation, and of course, make deep, rapid, and immediate cuts in fossil fuel emissions to keep global heating to within one and a half degrees Celsius. Ah, a critical threshold that world leaders agree warming should remain below to avoid catastrophic climate change. Yes. Quoting Antonio, surging seas are coming for us all. The world must look to the Pacific and listen to science. If we save the Pacific, we also save ourselves. Close quote. There you go. Thank you, Tony. And I am extremely embarrassed to report this next one. And I'm, uh, I apologize for even uh, sticking my little toe into the dog and pony show. But we're going to see what Umer Hack uh, has to say. I don't even, does Umer even live in the U.S.? But Umer is peeing his pants in excitement, asking Umer Hack, asking the question, can Kamala and Tim transform America? Is America poised to beat back fascism by electing to fascist? There you go. So we have Umer Hack cheering on Kamala Harris and Tim somebody, uh, Tim somebody to, uh, to save America. Yes. Okay. Why is Kamala's approach so devastatingly effective? I think that joy, as it's come to be called, goes straight to America's soul for a reason. America is a brutal society, and in Kamala, we see a leader modeling us for a new kind of way of healing. She is saying something like, everyone deserves to be joyous. Yes, just as they are. Not only if they're, if they're rich, famous, and powerful like her, and in the kind of society America has become, that is an incredibly powerful statement to make. Meanwhile, in Coach Tim, in Coach Tim, we see another kind of figure America has needed. Yes. All of this is adding up to a remarkable moment for America. It is poised, perhaps, to beat back fascism and reclaim its democracy. Yes, but more than that, too, to <coughs> mature 
and evolve as a society. Mm -hmm. This philosophy, and it is one that Tim and Kamala are offering, is a giant leap for America. It feels like a moment of transformation, because it is. This doesn't mean the election is over. It's not. Nor does it mean that any of this dog and pony show, unadulterated horseshit distraction solves all the world's problems. From climate change to conflict, you know, by putting some more war criminals in the White House, it doesn't, but it is remarkable to see, nonetheless. <laughs> oh, God. Umer Hack, uh, you, uh, you embarrass yourself more than you embarrass me. Uh, but anyway, we've been hearing this story building for a while. Uh, this is AP's latest. I guess it's coming to fruition. You know, we have these hoot owls. I love these owls. I have them in Florida and I have them here. They're called barred owls. B-A-R-R-E-D, not B-A-R-D. These, these hoot owls. I love these things. And they're, they're making their way farther and farther north and west. They're so uh, they're taking, the, these barred owls are taking full advantage of the collapse of everything. There are going to be some winners and losers. And so uh, looking, it's a, it actually is a pretty good century to be a barred owl, uh, but not so much for their close cousin, the spotted owl. Killings of invasive owls to ramp up on U.S. West Coast in a bid to save native birds. So they're acting like, most people would read this, that barred owls are an invasive species, maybe from China. And, but I don't know if they ever mention that the barred owl is native to the United States. Okay? It's not an invasive species. It's every bit as native as the spotted owl. Uh, but so far, you know, the, the barred owls are just getting into the spotted owl's territory. And so what are they going to do to save the spotted owl is just send a bunch of rednecks. You know, spotted owls look almost identical to their very close cousin, the barred owl. So they're going to send a bunch of rednecks out into the woods to shoot owls. Owls come, at not, come out at night. I don't know how exactly they're going to find these owls uh, in, in a deep forest when the owls, which, you know, blend right in with the trees. It doesn't talk about all that. U.S. wildlife officials beginning next year will drastically scale up efforts to kill invasive barred owls that are crowding out imperiled native owls from West Coast Forest under a plan finalized on Wednesday that faces challenges from barred owls returning after they have already been removed. Trained shooters will target barred owls over 30 years across about 23,000 square miles in California, Oregon, and Washington. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service goal is to kill up to 452,000 barred owls and halt the decline of competing northern spotted owls uh, and California spotted owls. So anyway, guys, 
Uh, th th this is going to be uh, an, an absolute catastrophe. Uh, and, and no telling how many barred owls are are, are going to get shot and killed by these damn redneck, specially trained sharpshooters. Give me a fucking break. Anyway, guys, I see my camera thing is flashing at me, so uh, if we have a collapse of global industrial civilization here, uh, I apologize now, but we're going to finish up over at medium.com. Someone I have never heard of, this controversial solution to climate change might be the only way to cool the earth. I have never heard of Bucho Abina the third. Bucho Abina the third. This is one of the worst articles that I have ever read in my entire life. I don't even know what which solution he's talking about, but it doesn't matter because neither one uh, are going to do a goddamn thing to save the planet. Although at least one's better than the other. So. Uh, Moving in here, I read an article in the New York Times about a scientist by the name of David Keith. Simply put, he is proposing a solution, a solution to, you know, to uh, frying the planet that puts more stuff into the air with the intention to cool the earth by blocking the sun. The stuff, sulfur dioxide. For people who aren't familiar with what it is, sulfur with what sulfur dioxide is, it is a gas that kind of smells like rotten eggs. Blah blah blah. Uh. And then. Uh, the idea is that we inject large amounts of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere far above all of us so that small sulfate particles start to form and then temporarily reflect the sun's rays back into space. Keith has done several interviews already talking about how he believes that the consequences are not as drastic as a lot of his critics are claiming them to be. He also goes on about saying that the potential benefit greatly outweighs the risks involved. Could he be right? Yeah, so anyway, but uh, so he talks about that. Then he has his own my act my actionable solution to climate change. I am no policy maker or politician who could say some words and snap their fingers to make a significant change, but what I could do is spread awareness and inspire others to help make change. Yes, I started my own foundation where I help raise awareness and funds to plant trees back into the most important tropical rainforest in the world, the Amazon rainforest. There you go. Even if climate change, he put is mitigated, but I think he meant to say is not mitigated. Even if climate change, well, is or is not mitigated, you can't argue with this. Taking care of the earth in positive ways is definitely still something worthwhile and fulfilling. Can't argue with that. Okay. What is Crystal Rivers? What is on her on her mind in this horribly worded article? Employing feminism. Employing feminism to help humans and Earth to succeed. 
to address our social and planetary crisis, we need all hands. Yeah. She starts out glowing about Kamala Harris and uh, the feminist Kamala and Tim. Feminism is the pursuit of equality for men and women in social, economic, and political realms. Blah, blah. Uh, feminism once understood not as supremacy, but as reciprocity can allow human beings to beat our most challenging foes. Among the greatest threats now to humanity are global heating, pollution, conflict caused by in encouraging in-groups and scapegoats, and exploitation of the weaker people and places by the more powerful, rich, and influential forces who gang up on others. Yes. So there you go. Uh, so we're going to let feminism that we're going to let feminism save us from save the planet. Yes. Anyway, feminism to save the planet. But like the this last one, I I have to admit. I th 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 this guy is, is his name is Angus, you know, like in the beef cow Angus, Angus Peterson. Never heard of this man. Why I still care about sustainability, even knowing the world will burn. What is the point when nothing matters? So this guy is a breeder. I don't know how many kids he has. I don't know if if this is a photo of of Angus Peterson or not. Uh, it's unclear whether we're looking at Angus uh, Angus the breeder. Uh, but what is on Angus's mind today? I love how he starts. Let's get one thing straight. Let's get one thing straight. The world is going to collapse. It won't be quick. It won't be all at once. And it won't be exactly how we think. But things are going to get completely fucked up. And let's get another thing straight. I care about what happens, even though there's very little I can do about it. Yes, there are a few reasons why I care. Yes, and, uh, and he lists his reasons. Uh, the world needs us. Yes. I care about sustainability because it's the right thing to do for the global population. A breeder talking about sustainability is the right thing to do for a global population of 8.3 billion people. Even in the face of insurmountable odds, of preventing climate change via drawdown and regeneration, carbon neutral will not work because existing emissions have locked us into some level of increased warming. Fighting against, fighting against the almost certain twin collapse of our environment 
and economy is a personal moral conviction. You know, there you go. Uh, while I may die in a world that is completely screwed up, my world, also known as my family, will know that I stood against the corruption and immorality of the capitalist hellscape I was raised in that resulted in the environmental collapse we are currently experiencing. Yes. Where is this one before uh, the uh, one of my Okay, here we go. What is the takeaway? The takeaway... <laughs> I care because while our world is fucked, the less we fuck it up, says the breeder, the more quickly the next generation can fix the problem. That is one hell of a takeaway. The reason Angus cares is because while our world is fucked, the less we fuck it up, the more quickly the next generation can fix the problem. <laughs> Yes, yeah, little dog. What do you think? We're gonna let the next generation compliments of this generation's breeders fix the problem. Uh huh. The next generation is going to unfuck the fucked up world. Anyway, it is Labor Day weekend, and I, I have to get into vacation rental super host mode. Put on my smiley summertime face to close out the summer of 2024 and start looking ahead to the next load of shit that ain't gonna happen my guys believe the camera made it oh, Jesus look at this I think it is 64 degrees 64 degrees here on uh, August 30th. I guess it's going to be back down into the mid 40s on September 1st. The leaves already changing and falling. Look at all these dead leaves out here, guys. Anyway, get out there and enjoy Labor Day weekend. 2024 while you still can my guys